Hello everyone. We are getting ready to read chapter three of Summer of the Monkeys. Hope everyone is doing well and keeping busy. Remember that next week we get to start online school and so around Wednesday I will be starting to post some assignments for you in Teams. If you're having trouble getting on Teams, please make sure you let me know so I can help you out with that. And I've called all of your moms and dads and hopefully um, I've talked to all of them. There's a few that I still need to talk to. So please call me back so we can make sure everybody is all set for our new adventure of learning remotely. So without further ado, chapter three of Summer of the Monkeys. On my way home, I whistled and sang. I was so happy I made up a little song. It went something like this. There are monkeys in the bottoms in those tall white sycamores. There are monkeys in the bottoms worth a million or more. So come along, old rowdy, and let's get on the trail of a hundred dollar monkey. We'll catch him by the tail. That's how I think it went anyways. Rowdy didn't seem to like my singing at all. He wouldn't even look at me. He just jogged along with his head down as if I wasn't even there. I was the happiest boy in the Ozark Hills, and I figured I was pretty close to being the richest boy, too. All I had to do was catch those monkeys. Right then, that didn't seem like any chore at all. Several times I stopped and tried to do a little arithmetic in the dust of the country road. Smoothing out a place with my hand and using my finger as a pencil, I tried hard to figure out how much money the monkeys were worth. I didn't have too much trouble adding up a column of $2 monkeys. It was that hundred dollar monkey I had trouble with. Every time I added him to the pot, something went wrong. I'd get so rich and excited I couldn't figure anything right. Rowdy didn't help the situation in the least. He couldn't understand what I was doing down on my knees in the middle of the road, fiddling around in the dust. He would get curious and come sniffing around to see what was going on. All he did was walk around in my figures and mess things up until I couldn't tell what the monkeys were worth. I finally gave up, decided I'd let Daisy figure it out for me. She was good with arithmetic. The road from Grandpa's store ran by our farm. As I came walking along, singing my head off, Papa called to me from the field where he was planting corn. I climbed the rail fence and walked over to him. Papa smiled and said, Say, it looks like you were right about those monkeys. Right after you left for the store, I went to get Sally Gooden, and I think I saw a monkey in every sycamore tree down there. I can't understand it. As far as I know, we've never had any wild monkeys around here. They're not wild, Papa. I said they've got away from the circus train that was wrecked over on the railroad. Grandpa told me all about it. He said that there were about 30 of them. They're worth a lot of money, too. Circus people are offering a reward for them. So that's where they came from, Papa said, looking relieved. I'm glad to hear that. I was beginning to wonder what was going on around here. Did you say they're offering a reward? They sure are, I said, and it's more money than I ever heard of. They're willing to pay $2 a piece for all of those monkeys but one, and they'll pay $100 for that one. I really bore down on it when I told Papa about that $100 monkey. Papa just stood there for a second, staring at me, then uttered in a low whistle. He turned and looked toward the river bottom. Say, that is a lot of money, he said. I didn't know money monkeys were worth so much money. I didn't either, Papa, I said. Beats anything I ever heard of. All of that money for a bunch of little old monkeys? Papa frowned and said, there must be more to this than we know about. I can understand a fellow paying $2 for a monkey, but who ever heard of paying $100 for one? Papa said, Grandpa said those monkeys have been trained for acts in the circus, and it takes a long time to train a monkey. That's why they're so valuable. He couldn't get that, Papa was like me, he couldn't get that $100 monkey off his mind. Well, I don't care how long it takes to train a monkey, he said. A hundred dollars is a hundred dollars. Why, you can buy a good mule for that much money, and if you talk just right, they might even throw in the harness. There's a catch to this reward business, Papa said. The monkeys have to be caught alive and not harmed in any way. I see, Papa said, nodding his head. I figured there was a catch somewhere. When it comes to making money like that, there's always a catch. It would be simple to shoot those monkeys, but taking them alive, I don't know about that. Could turn out to be a tough job. Well, I don't care how tough it is, Papa, I said. If you let me try, I'd sure like to give it a try. I believe I can catch those monkeys, every last one of them. Papa thought a second and said, 
It may not be as easy as you think it is. How would you go about catching them? With these, I said, reaching in my gunny sack for the traps. Grandpa fixed them for me. He thinks they're the very thing for catching monkeys and not hurting them. Papa took one of the traps and looked it over. Then he laughed and said, <laughs> leave it to your grandpa to figure out something like this. But by golly, it does look like a good idea. Yes, sir. It sure does. It might work at that. Handing the trap back to Papa, back to me, Papa said, you know, this time of year there's not much to do around the farm, just planting, and I can take care of that. You go right ahead and have a go at those monkeys. Maybe you can catch them. You've caught everything else in these hills. I'll catch them, I said very determinedly. You just wait and see. By tomorrow night, I'll have a sack full of them, and one of them will be that $100 monkey. He's the Jasper I'll be looking for. We'll see, Papa said laughing. Glancing up at the sun, he said, Now you better get to the house and help your mother set those hens. I'd like to finish planting this field before sundown. I thank Grandpa for going, or I thank Papa for going along with me on my monkey catching business and strutted off toward the house. So far, everything was working out fine, but there was one more stump in the way. That was Mama. I was well prepared for her, though. After all, I'd been living around Mama for 14 years, and a boy can learn a lot about his Mama in that length of time. I knew just what to do and just what to say to wear her down. Papa had already told Mama about seeing the monkeys, but when I told her about the reward and that I intended to catch them, she did just what I had expected her to do. She flew straight up. Jay Berry, she said in a hard voice, you're not going down in those bottoms to catch any monkeys. Now that's all there is to it. I won't have it at all. Why, I go crazy. Putting one of my half-dead, broken leg looks on my face, I got ready for one of those mama and boy go-arounds. But mama, I argued, just think of how much money those monkeys are worth. And you know I never get a chance to make any money. Just 10 or 15 cents now and then for an old possum hide or something. What, if I could catch all of them, I could get myself the pony in 22 I've been wanting for so long. You wouldn't keep me from doing that, would you? I saw a hurt look spread over Mama's face. This made me feel bad, but I had been wanting a pony in 22 for so long, I didn't want to give up. Mama came over to me and started straightening my suspenders. Seemed like my old suspenders were always twisted. Grandpa said I got into my britches too fast. Jay Barry, Mama said, I know how you've been wanting a pony and a gun, but I worry so much when you're down in the bottoms. Just you and that old hound dog. Well, I never know what's liable to happen. Besides, it would be practically impossible to catch a monkey in those bottoms. Monkeys like to climb, and one of, some of those sycamore trees are 100 feet tall. You'd probably fall out of one and break every bone in your body. Reaching for my traps, I said, Mama, I'm not going to do any tree climbing. I'm going to trap the monkeys. Mama frowned and took one, look at, took one of the traps. She looked it over and said, this is some of your grandpa's work, isn't it? Uh-huh, said he fixed them for me. Shaking her head, Mom said, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder who the boy is, you or your grandpa. Have you talked to your father about this monkey catching idea of yours? Seeing that Mama was giving in a little, I started talking a hundred miles a minute. He said it was all right with him, Mama, I said. There's not much to do around the farm right now, just planting, and he said he could take care of that. Handing the trap back to me, Mama sighed and said, Well, between your father and your grandpa, it looks like I can't say no. But, Jay Barry, there's one thing I want understood. You are not going to those bottoms monkey hunting unless your father is close by in the fields. If something did happen to you, maybe between him and Rowdy, we could at least find your body. Mama could take a little bit of something like that and make it sound like the funeral had already started. She was good at things like that. Mama, I said very seriously, do all mamas worry like you do? I'm 14 years old, almost a grown man, and you've been worrying about me ever since I was born. Makes me feel no bigger than a jumped up minute. Mama smiled and said, I'm pretty sure that all mothers worry about their boys. Right now, you're a little too young to understand, but someday you'll be married and probably have a boy of your own. Then I think you'll understand. Oh, no, I won't, Mama, I said, shaking my head. I'll never get married. I can't understand women. Mama got kind of a, kind of mad when I said that. Don't be silly, she snapped. That was a very nice thing to say. Now you go get that straw. I want to set those hens. Feeling as good as if I had just waded the Mississippi River, I breathed a sigh of relief and lit out for the barn to get some straw. 
Besides Sally Gooden, there was one other thing we had around our farm that I thought we could surely do without. That was setting hens. Mom and Daisy could do anything in the world with the hateful old things, but I couldn't. Every time I got close to one of the cranky old sisters, she puffed up ten times bigger than she actually was, started squawking and pecking. By the time we had the old gals taken care of, my hands were hurting all over. Mom and I were back in the house, and I was rubbing some Raleigh salve on my hen-pecked hands when I thought of my little sister. Mama, where's Daisy? I asked. I want to tell her about the monkeys. I think she's up in her playhouse, Mama said. I saw her going up that trail a while ago. Taking the sack of candy that Grandpa had given me, I started up to Daisy's playhouse. I was almost there when I heard her laughing and talking. Leaving the trail, I eased around and peeked through the bushes to see what was going on. A small sunbeam had bored its way down through the overhead green, and the playhouse was bathed in a warm, radiant glow. Daisy was sitting on the ground with her back against the trunk of a huge red oak. Her crutch was lying beside her. As usual, her little friends were all around. Chipmunks were scampering and birds were singing. A churring squirrel was perched on an, on an arm of the cross. His flick and tail was keeping perfect time to the music of the hills. A big fat bunny was curled up in Daisy's lap just as though he belonged there. As I watched, a tiny little wren dropped down from the branches of the red oak and lit on Daisy's crippled leg. She smiled and started cooing to it. Everything looked so peaceful and happy that I hated to disturb them. Just before I stepped out of the bushes, I coughed to let them know I was coming. The instant I showed my face, you'd have thought a booger man had shown up. The bunny hopped and squirrel jumped, the birds flew, and the chipmunks faded into the ground. It always made me mad when the silly things did that. I would never have harmed one of Daisy's little friends. Old Rowdy wouldn't have hurt any of them either, and that was saying something. Feeling hurt all over, but letting on like I hadn't noticed anything, I handed the sack of candy to Daisy and said, Guess what happened? Daisy always seemed to be about one jump ahead of me. Smiling, she said, I already know about the monkeys, Jay Barry. Papa told Mama and me about them when he brought Sally Gooden in from the bottoms. Trying to act very important, I shut my hands down in the pockets of my in my pockets and said, those monkeys are worth quite a bit of money. I'm going to catch them and get myself that pony and gun I've been wanting. Every time I mentioned catching something to Daisy, she naturally figured that I intended to kill it and skin it. Brown and she said, Jay Barry, I know how you've been wanting a pony and a gun, but isn't there some other way you could get them? I've seen pictures of monkeys and they're the cutest little things. I just couldn't stand to think of one being skinned. How would you like it if someone caught you and peeled your skin off? You wouldn't like it, would you? Aw, oh, Daisy, I said. You girls sure do think funny. Who ever heard of anyone skinning a boy? I'm not going to skin the monkeys. I'm going to catch them alive. They won't, hurt, won't be hurt in any way. Daisy sighed her relief and said, I'm glad you're not going to hurt them. Every time I walk by the smokehouse and see all those little skins you have stretched there, I just shiver all over. Well, you can stop shivering, I said. I promise that I won't harm one hair on those monkeys. How do you know so much about the monkeys anyway, Daisy asked. Papa said he couldn't remember any wild monkeys being around here before. Well, they're not exactly wild monkeys, I said. They got away from a circus train that had a wreck over on the railroad. Grandpa told me all about it. He even fixed some traps for me so I could catch them. Well, that's just like Grandpa, Daisy exclaimed. He's always telling you how to catch the little animals. Surely, Jay Bear, you don't get any fun out of it, do you? Ah, oh, Daisy, I said, what do you think animals are for anyway? Just to look at? They're supposed to be hunted. How else would a boy have any fun in these hills? Shaking her head and looking very disgusted with me, Daisy said, Jay Barry, you should have a talk with the old man of the mountains. I think maybe he could tell you a few things. Being a boy, though, I doubt you would understand a word he said. There it was again, the old man of the mountains. Daisy had mentioned him several times, and I hadn't paid much attention to her. After all, she lived in one of those girl kind of worlds, and it was chock full of strange old men, fairies, angels, spirits, knights in shining armor, and everything else you could think of. I just figured that all girls were like that, and it wasn't anything to get excited about. But Daisy had a way of making things sound so real that sometimes I didn't know whether to believe her or not. Daisy did this by telling stories. She was the best storyteller in those Ozark Hills. It wasn't only the story she told, it was the way she told them. She would get real serious and her eyes would get big and starry looking. She would talk in a whisper and go through all kinds of motions. 
By the time she was finished with her story, my hair would be standing straight up and I wouldn't know what to believe. Daisy, I said, you've been telling me about this old man of the mountains for a long time now. Who is he anyway? Oh, he's just a friendly old man, she said very pertly. He comes around every once in a while and visits with me. He does, I said. When was the last time you saw him? Why, just the mo this morning, she said, right here in my playhouse. You did, I said. What's the old man's name? Well, I don't know what his name is, Daisy said. I never have asked him. I just call him the old man in the mountains. Where does he live, I asked. Way back in the mountains somewhere, Daisy said. Is he a farmer, I asked. Oh, no, Daisy said. He doesn't do any farming. He doesn't have time. Doesn't have time, I said. What's he do? Well, he takes care of the hills, Daisy said. Takes care of the hills, I exclaimed. While well, the hills don't need taking care of, who ever heard of anything like that? Well, that's all you know, Daisy said. There are a lot of things in the hills that need taken care of. What would happen to all the little animals and the birds and the flowers if someone didn't look out for them? That's what the old man in the mountain does. He just walks through the hills looking out for everything. I laughed out loud. Ah, oh, Daisy, I said. You're just making this up. I don't believe there is an old man in the mountains. A frightened look flashed in Daisy's eyes. Placing a finger over her lips, she looked around. Shh, don't say things like that, Jay Berry, she said. Don't ever say you don't believe in the man, old man of the mountains. He hears everything that's said in these hills, and he'll cause you to have bad luck. At that moment, Daisy couldn't have said anything that would have more effect on me. With all those monkeys around and the chance to make some money, I sure didn't want to have any bad luck. Besides, there were a few bad luck things I believed in. Things like hearing a screech owl at midnight, tripping over a broom, or dropping the water bucket in the well. Those were sure signs of bad luck. Now maybe there was an old man of the mountains. Maybe he could cast a bad luck spell. Maybe he would get all fired up if I said I didn't believe in him. Anyhow, I wasn't taking any chances. Daisy, I said, is there really an old man of the mountains, and can he cause people to have bad luck? Looking at me as if I didn't have any sense at all, Daisy said, Why, certainly, Jay Berry. There's an old man of the mountains. Everybody knows that. Well, I didn't, I said. With all that bad luck talk Daisy saw, she had me worried, and she took advantage of it. Getting very serious, she took another look around and started talking in a whisper. Sit down, Jay Berry, she said, and I'll tell you all about the old man of the mountains. I didn't want to, but I sat down by her side and listened while she went into her story. Jay Berry, she said, the old man of the mountains is very, very old. He's as old as these hills. His hair is snow white and hangs way down over his shoulders. He wears a long white robe and sandals on his feet. Every time I see him, he has a crooked stick in his hand. He could just point that stick at something and it will disappear. Daisy, I interrupted in a low voice. Is this old man a ghost or something? Oh no, Jay Berry, she whispered. He doesn't even look like a ghost. He has a kind, gentle face. He looks sad, though, like maybe he feels sorry about something. I think he feels sorry for the little animals. I thought girls were the only one that felt sorry for animals, I said. How come this old man feels sorry for them? Because it's his job to look out for them, Daisy said. You see, Jay Berry, when God made these hills, he needed someone to take care of the animals and the birds and the flowers. So he gave the job to the old man of the mountains. All he does now is walk around through the hills and take care of things. What does the old man do in the winter time when the snow comes and everything goes to sleep, I asked. What's he do then? Daisy had an answer for everything. Well, he goes to sleep too, she said. That's the only time he gets to rest. He works so hard through the summer that he's very tired when winter comes. So he just goes to sleep and rests until spring comes again. Daisy stopped to get her breath before going on. He is a wonderful old man, she said. If you're good and believe in him, you'll always be happy and you'll never have bad luck. But if you're mean and hurt the little animals, you'd better look out. He'll just point that stick at you and you're sure to have bad luck. Daisy had me so shaken up by now, I hardly knew what to believe. Just to be on the safe side, I said, when will you see this old man again? Oh, I never know when I'll see him, she said. He just comes around any time he wants to. Well, the next time you see him, I said, getting to my feet, you tell him I'd sure like to meet him and shake hands with him. Along about then, I would have shaken hands with a centipede if I thought that, that would help me catch a monkey.
Shaking her head and looking very sad, Jay Daisy said, Jay Berry, I don't know if the old man of the mountains would see you or not. You've been a pretty bad boy, you know. You're all the time catching the little animals, and the old man of the mountains doesn't like anyone who does things like that. But every boy in the hills catches things, I said. Well, you make it sound, this old man could never like a boy, just girls. Oh, he could like boys too, Daisy said. He could like boys just about as much as he does girls, but they'd have to leave the little animals alone, or he wouldn't. Well, I didn't know what to do. Daisy had me pretty well convinced that there was an old man of the mountains. Now, if he didn't like boys who caught animals and could cause them to have bad luck, I was just in for it. That's all there was to it. So, that is the end of chapter three. Now I have to go back to my normal talk. It'll take me a couple hours to get back to my normal talk. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, hope you're having a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.